Our company really only started the early part of this year and our second hole is a new discovery. That's a good place to be in. And, and man, we've got a lot of work to do here coming up. I think that it's critical that the West leads the way in the development of artificial intelligence. And that's going to mean a lot more power. Talking uranium today with Galen and the guys from Aero Energy out of Canada. Great to have you here. And congrats, some uh, really good high-grade uranium assays coming in from your 2024 season. Thanks, Arne. Good to be back on the show and, and to talk to you again. And great to be able to talk about some good mineralization that we've intersected on the Mermac project, project with our partners, Fortune Bay. Uh, eight meters of 0.3% U308 with some nice high-grade kickers uh, up to 13% uh, U308. No surprise for us. We've announced that it's radioactive. We knew that it was radioactive, but big picture takeaway here is that, you know, we've found something interesting and we need to expand out around it and really just continue to be aggressive with the drill bit as we as we look for that next great Canadian uranium discovery. Yeah, and winter drilling season is ahead, so there is more use flow coming later this year. And just adding a bit of perspective, we know one gram per ton on gold is a really good grade, uh, commercially viable. How does that compare to the uranium space, getting and a bit of context here? Yeah, you know what, perhaps uranium is a little less understood in terms of values in the ground, but because uranium is trading at what north of $80 per pound, it's very, very valuable. Of course, that makes sense, right, just intuitively. But in terms of gold, if we were to compare uranium grades to gold grades, just on a price comparison, 0.3% U308 has the same in situ value in the ground of seven grams per ton gold. You know, all other things being equal, that's probably not like the fairest comparison because the economics of producing it are completely different. But that's just how I just like to think about it in my mind personally. Yeah. And uh, just a reminder here, I mean, we had a uranium conference yesterday that next gen is going to go into production in uh, four years time and safe jurisdiction is key. So, um, yeah, we've got Kazakhstan as the greatest producer in the world, but they're also looking to. Uh, for various reasons, uh, reduce uh, production volumes. So um, it looks like Canada as the jurisdiction is going to be the place to be for uranium going forward. Absolutely right. Like this safe jurisdiction, first world jurisdictions, Western jurisdictions, th there's just this emerging theme of getting our critical and very important metals from places like Canada, you know, and places like the United States that has become very important in the last, say, few years. As conflicts have emerged in in Europe and now in the Middle East, I think it's it's very domestic source of sources of supply of these metals are really really important for us as a society. So you know, me personally, you know, we're we're working in Saskatchewan and is a is a great jurisdiction to be with great history of uranium production, and that's not going to stop anytime soon. So yeah, happy to be there. Yeah, we heard uh, that just in the fifties and sixties there were twenty thousand people working in the uranium industry in North America. So um, We'll see. And looking at the prices, I mean, currently uh, uranium trading at $83 per pound. So pretty solid. And we've had some huge gains from the lows uh, of 2015. But if we look back to 2007, $140, we're nowhere close an all-time high on uranium. That's right. Re really nowhere close. From my perspective, you know, I I'd like to see some sustained interest in the markets, which, you know, I think uh, things are looking back up again for uranium stocks and exploration plays like ours. We've obviously seen sentiment change since the early part of this year, but of course, like it turned off quickly. It's when it turns on, oftentimes it turns on just as quickly. So, I mean, for me personally, I'd like to be as positioned as possible. Uh, and I think I am, I hope I am. Things are gonna come back when they do, they're, they're gonna come back fast. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if we look at uh, the yearly gains, uh, the statistics, you normally make your annual gains on 10 days of trading. So very risky to stand on the sidelines. And we've just seen the volume on Aero Energy pick up tenfold in the last three days. Things can happen very quickly in the junior space once good news comes out flowing. And talking of news, just adding a bit of context, we just talked about the nuclear uranium price here. The number of nuclear reactors, I mean, there are, of course, always uh, different ways of looking at things. But just seeing the statistic here from the International uh, Atomic Energy Association, the number of reactors and the number of reactors planned and under construction with, of course, China leading the way, the demand for uranium is going to only go up because there is going to be more plants going 
live on the grid. Yeah, absolutely. And we've been, you know, between us and everyone we know, all of our friends, we've been talking about this for years. But I think the really, for me, what's helping put things into perspective is the power needs that are going to be required as AI gets developed. And I think that it's critical that the West leads the way uh, in the development of artificial intelligence. And that's going to mean a lot more power. And again, it comes back to the fact that we want to be getting our uranium from, quote unquote, good places, from the best jurisdictions. So, you know, I just see the future for nuclear as being being very, very bright personally. Now, you know, I'm a geologist and I'm into exploration. So this is one of the things I very much want to be looking for. And it's nice to be able to, to, to have some success for us right out of the hop. You know, our company really only started in, you know, early, the early part of this year and our and our second hold is a new discovery. You know, that's a good place to be in. And, and man, we've got a lot of, of work to do here coming up. Very much looking forward to it. And I think it's fantastic that you've only just explored about 1% of your 250,000 acre land package. So there is still a lot ahead in the coming years for investors in aero energy. And just here, also a nice statistic um, that we commissioned for you. If you look at Europe, of course, Germany turned off its nuclear power plants. And that's the dark green color you see there with the slight dip. But if you look at the overall forecast, that's more than offset by Asia. So you've got to look at the, the, the world is not just Europe, it's not just North America. We have an overall trend of decarbonization and electrification with AI data centers, with electric vehicles, but also with heat pumps driving the demand for electricity. So yes, in Europe, supply and demand might be a bit different than in Asia when it comes to uranium, but there is overall a growing demand for uranium, as we see right now with the number of uh, nuclear power plants coming on the grid in the next uh, decade. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that's a that's a very nice looking chart. You know, I I wonder what's going to happen in Europe in the next you know five years. You know, do you think that Germany might decide that they want to reactivate some of their you know their nuclear capabilities? Yeah. If I would have to make a guess, um, Sweden just made a memorandum of uh, putting nuclear back in the game. Poland has just started on planning. So it could be that even if one country like Germany decides to stay off the nuclear path, that other countries are going to step in and then sell at very high uh, wholesale prices, 20, 25 cents, 30 cents per kilowatt, sell that energy to Germany. So uh, that's maybe how it will uh, play out in the connected market. Yeah, I, you know what? I think you might be right about that. I think Germany might be forced to kind of come back into the fold. I mean, if there's a choice between nuclear power plants and buying gas from Russia, that's a hard choice uh, to have to make. Yeah, I mean, good that we don't have to make that choice. But yeah, we'll see. There's elections coming up in the US in November. There's elections coming up next year in Germany. So uh, interesting time. And Galen, I really look forward to the winter drilling season on Aero Energy. Um, let's stay in touch and hope to see the next high-grade assay soon. Absolutely. Thanks very much for having me on again. Great to talk to you.